Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video and the start of my Pigment Powder 101 series. In this series I'm going to be sharing some ideas of things to do with pigment powders and these are the pigment powders that I currently own. I've got a range of luscious pigment powders, a couple of Cosmic Shimmer Pixie powders and a bunch of Hunky Dory Prism World of Colour pearlescent powders. Before we get into techniques how to use these powders, I thought I'd tell you what I know about what pigment powders are. There are lots of different pigment powders on the market. You might have heard of brushos, you might have some Lindy Stamp Gang magical powders. There are loads and loads of different ones. But basically, they are all the same thing with a few differences between them, I think. So let's have a look at a luscious powder. Let's move these out of the way. I'm going to pop this onto a bit of deli paper just so I can easily tip it back into the pot. And this is what's in the pot of luscious powders. And the Cosmic Shimmer Pixie powders are much the same in the pot there. And we've got these in the Prism Pearlescent Powders. So you're basically, as the name suggests, getting a powder. Now, the ones I've got here are made of three main components. You've got the colour or the pigment powder. You've also got some mica powder. Mica is a naturally occurring mineral that is glittery or shiny when it's ground down into powder form. And that's in there too. And there's also something called a binder. And the binder activates when you add water or wet mediums to this and makes it stick to whatever you're putting it on, like the paper. So you can make a paint out of these with water, paint it on, and once it's painted and dried, it won't shift. You won't be able to brush it off. So that's what's in a luscious powder, a prism powder, cosmic pixie powder. So you might be able to see there some of the glitteriness. Brushos are a little different because they're just pigment powder and binder as far as I'm aware. They don't have any mica in them but you can get mica or something similar to mix in with them to give them that shimmery shiny look. So brushos are matte, they're not glittery, they're not shimmery, not shiny whereas these ones here because they've got the mica in they are shimmery once dry. So what can you do with these pigment powders, whether they're shiny with mica in them or not, whether they're just flat and matte? Well, you can mix them with all sorts of things. You can mix them with water, gesso, acrylic paint. You can mix them with texture paste, with gel mediums, like matte gel medium or gloss gel medium. You can mix them with alcohol inks. You can mix them with isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. You can mix them with waxes, with gilding gums, with varnish, with shaving foam. So they're very mixable. You can make all sorts of things with them. You can also use them dry. You can just brush them on and we'll be looking at that technique in this video. You can mix them with clear embossing powder or coloured embossing powder to change the colour of the embossing powder. And once you've mix them with whatever you're going to mix them with. You can splatter and smush and paint. You can make sprays. You can make your paper wet and drop powder on or you can drop powder on your paper and then add water. You can heat emboss with them. You can apply them somehow to an embossing folder. You can use them on dark paper as well as light colour paper. You can apply them through a stencil if you've mixed them, say, with a texture paste. You can mix them to make colours of your own. I could mix this raspberry jam colour with this crushed velvet colour to get a colour in between. If you mix them with a gilding gum or some kind of wax, you can turn them into gilding waxes. You can pretty much do all the techniques that you can do with all the various mediums that you buy for your craft stash, for your crafting. But the thing that I like about pigment powders is their versatility. Because you can do so much with them, 
you don't have to buy a million different products. You can have a tub of pigment powder and then get really basic products to mix with them and customise them to your heart's content. Now, some powders don't have a binder in them. And that just means that when dry on your project, they might brush off because there's nothing to bind them to the paper. You can get something called gum arabic, which is the binder that is basically used in paints like watercolours, and mix it with your pigment powders. And that will bind your powders to your project. So if you find when you do whatever it is you do with them, they brush off or they blow away. Uh, get some gum arabic and try using that with them you'll obviously have to do some research into the exact technique of how to use it but that's what you're looking for gum arabic or you can spray your project with a fixative once it's all dry so you can get something like a cheap hairspray or a transparent fixative spray like an artist quality one and when your project's dry give it a spray in a well ventilated area and that will stick your pigment powder to your project and stop it drifting away. So in this series all the techniques that I'm showing you I'll be using these products with but you experiment with what you have. I'm not saying you need to go out and buy luscious powders or prism powders or pixie powders. If you've got some in your stash try the ideas that I share with you in this series see if it works and if not play around to see how you can make it work and I'd also recommend checking out the YouTube channels of all the manufacturers who produce the powders that you have. I know Indigo Blue have a YouTube channel where they share some really helpful videos on how to use their particular product but you check out the manufacturers for the products that you have and you'll get some useful how-tos. If it's not on YouTube, it'll probably be on their website. Right, enough waffling about what these are. Let's get on with making a card or two. So for today's technique, we're going to use the powders dry and we're going to stick them onto some smooth white cardstock. And I'm going to show you three ways of sticking them down. So you can use whichever way is most convenient or easiest for you. The first way is to add here some double-sided sticky. I won't peel the backing off just yet. But I've put some double-sided sticky on this bit here. This next one, I'm going to use this liquid glue by Spectrum Noir Versatile Adhesive. There are lots of different brands, again, on the market that you can use. And I'm going to just add it onto my bit of card here and use a sponge dauber to spread it around. And this I need to leave for a little bit to let it dry and become sticky. So that can go over there until we're ready. This I'm going to pop into a pot of water and then wash it out later and that should be just fine. On this one I'm going to use Zig two-way glue. So this glue is blue when wet but turns clear when dry. So what I want is the dry glue which is tacky. So I'm going to squirt a load on here and try and spread it out roughly evenly not too streaky although it can be a bit of a, a pickle to get rid of the streaks but as long as it's covered in blue glue at this stage I'll be happy and I need that to go clear before I can go on to the next step so there we go that's gone clear now so I'll peel, peel the backing off of this so I've got my double-sided sticky, my Spectrum Noir and my Zig. And before I add my pigment powders, I'm going to add some gold gilding flakes. Just dot these around. And this just adds a bit of variation and a little bit of extra shine. This step has nothing to do with pigment powders really, but I just thought I'd show you. I think I picked this technique up from the Indigo Blue 
YouTube channel. So we'll add some of those. Same here, not too much because I want the, the pigment powders to be the star of the show really. But you can see how that glue is grabbing the gold. You don't want to press these down just yet because I want to be able to get some of the powders around them and underneath them a bit. So here's the zig and that's grabbing it nicely too. And now for the pigment powders, I've got raspberry jam and green here and for these working with these I just use two cheap makeup brushes I picked these up at Superdrug and as I say they were cheap this is what I use generally for picking up the pigment powder and this is what I use for brushing it away so I'm going to get some raspberry jam and pop that on Tap off the excess, keep the lid on. You need to use these in well ventilated areas, I think. Obviously not too windy though, because they will blow all over the place. So I'm just adding some bits of this in the gaps. Okay, and now, one at a time, a little does go a long way with these so all I'm doing is just spreading the powder out and pressing down the gold and you'll know if you've got enough powder on oopsie it's stuck to the sticky you'll know if you've got enough powder on it because you won't be able to feel the stickiness anymore so we might have to add a bit more if it's still sticky, if it still sticks to your brush. And you can tap it off, give it a swipe with that. And then with this one again, exactly the same. Brush it over, press down some of the gold move the pigment around so it doesn't feel sticky anymore you can tap it off brush it off like that pop that over there and the last one this one is the zig isn't it the two-way glue need something like a little bit of sponge that's all this is I think this came with the spectrum noir glue and it is literally a bit of sponge and you just gently go over it and this is to burnish the gilding flakes it presses them down and enhances their shine and it shouldn't disturb the glue underneath or the powder So if you weren't using the gilding flakes, you wouldn't need this bit of the process. It is literally just for the gilding flakes, the gold flakes. So now we have three very pretty pigment powder and gilding flake panel, and we can die cut from this. So I'll start with this one. Hang on, I'll just cut it down so it'll go through my mini Gemini or my Gemini mini. Just pop that on there. Pop that on there. So that was the double-sided sticky. So I'm going to put double sided sticky on the back of those just so we can compare them in a minute so then we have it three sets of hearts made using the same 
technique but different adhesives and they all look pretty similar the main difference for me is the double-sided adhesive remains a bit sticky so i can do that with it i can feel the stickiness of the tape the, the sheet underneath it's not a hundred percent de-sticked if you see what i mean and there are some i don't know what you call them little flecks where powders haven't stuck to adhesive because it's not there the sheets aren't perfect they've got little i guess pock marks in them so it's a slightly more distressed look these were the spectrum noir glue hearts and these have no stick on them at all so they're not going to stick where you don't want them to so the powders have taken a stick away this one is the zig two way and that is a little bit tacky but it's not nearly as tacky as that it's almost completely tack free so my preference if i was going to do this technique would be to use this spectrum noir liquid glue but i can see this being really helpful you could die cut some sticky out of this and then stick the powders on and, and create a i guess like almost a faux foiling technique which we'll do later on down the line we'll try that out the zig 2a glue pen is good but i do find it quite streaky because of the way you apply it with the foam i guess uh, end to the pen you could perhaps try using a sponge dauber to de-streak it or you could embrace the streak and make it part of your design so the glue that you use to stick these down will vary depending on obviously what's available to you but what technique you might want to uh, embrace right let's make these into a card so for today's card i'm going to do long and thin and i'm going to use my scoreboard to add a bit of detail around the edge so at half a centimeter i'm just scoring all the way around and for a bit of dimension i'm going to pop my card up on foam tape I've decided to use the Zig Hearts and the Spectrum Noir Glue Hearts. The double sided ones are currently too tacky for me. And I think I'll just make some balloons like that. So the big ones I will put flat on the background and the smaller ones I'll pop up, so it'll be three flat ones and three popped up ones. So my balloons need some string and I'm going to aim for this point here. I'm going to make this into a doodled bow. It's going to have lots of bits to it. And I want the tips of my popped up balloons to press down onto where their little tie is. So I've got some mini glue dots here, just going to tuck underneath and press down so that the balloons at least look like they're attached to their strings I'm 
And for my sentiment, I'm going to use this Celebrate, which I printed at home and then cut using my Silhouette Cameo. My string here went a little bit wonky. That's the trouble with hand-drawn things. They can end up with a bit wonky. I'm going to disguise that as best I can by sticking my sentiment right over the top. And because this card doesn't have enough sparkle and shine, I'm going to add some Nouveau drops amongst my balloons. This is just going to give it a bit of extra added energy and vibrancy. And I'm going to call this done, I think. So that's the first video in our Pigment Powders 101 series. I hope you found today's video helpful and I hope you come back for the rest of the series in which we will explore lots of different things to do with these pigment powders. Right, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.